In September 1859, scientists observed the first confirmed powerful solar flare. The sun threw a large amount of radiation, energy, and plasma material into space. This was a massive and devastating disaster, but it happened 93 million miles away. So it probably wasn't such a big problem, right? Well, actually it was. A few hours after the flare was spotted, telegraph lines stopped working all over Europe and North America. Some of them sparked and caused fires. People realized that the sun was not only the source of light and warmth, but also danger. Scientists called that day the Carrington Effect. The good news is that this happened in the middle of the 19th century and didn't cause serious problems for the planet. The bad news is that scientists are warning that in 2025, Earth will experience even more powerful solar storms caused by a coronal mass ejection. This is a giant cloud of plasma or charged gas. At one time, the Sun can throw billions of tons of this material into space. Then, all this flies at high speed through space. Some of the material can reach our planet in 15 hours, the rest in a few days. During the journey, it captures and accelerates any charged particles encountered along the way, which increases its intensity and power. And then, this unstoppable array of energy crashes into our planet. It heats the upper layers of the atmosphere, increases its thickness, and disturbs the work of satellites. They slow down and lose altitude. Communication with satellites becomes unstable. GPS is buggy. Data is poorly transmitted. Also, solar charged gas penetrates into our power grids, transformer booths, and stations. It leads to massive failures that ruin the work of the entire technological chain. A powerful solar attack on several power plants can trigger a power outage in a large city. The internet, phones, social services, networks, nothing will work. We may lose connection with each other. Many large companies would go bankrupt, and the planet may face economic crises. These are big problems, but not the most serious ones. Electric plants serve boiler houses and water pumping stations. Solar storms could stop water from getting to our homes. You wouldn't be able to buy groceries in stores without cash. Of course, we can restore all this, but we'll have to live in the Iron Age for a while. But the worst thing is that a prolonged solar storm can suspend food production. For example, this year, a geomagnetic storm caused by solar storms shut down GPS satellites that are connected with modern tractors, so farmers couldn't work. What would happen if such storms happened every day for a year? We would probably start missing many items in supermarkets. Besides, maritime navigation also depends on satellites. Thanks to them, ships calculate the latitude and longitude of their location. If the satellites are damaged, ships may get lost in the ocean. Even whales get lost in the ocean during magnetic storms. Many birds navigate with the help of magnetic field during long flights to the south. So, not only people, but also animals may experience serious problems. Solar storms heat the upper layers of the Earth's atmosphere and thus make the air thicker. The movement of satellites slows down because of this air resistance. They lose altitude, and one of these satellites is Hubble. Yes, the very telescope that provides us with incredible pictures of space. Scientists say that it will fail much earlier because of solar attacks. You've probably heard on the news that solar activity has recently caused electromagnetic storms on Earth. But fortunately, it hasn't affected our lives in any way. The only problem was headaches, high pressure, and mood swings during those storms. It seems like an ordinary thing, but scientists don't have a consensus on this topic. No one has proven exactly how and why magnetic storms affect our condition. Yes, during storms, the planet's atmosphere becomes less dense, and perhaps this affects our blood pressure, like it happens when the weather changes. So people with cardiovascular system problems should be careful. But the effect on our nervous system, fortunately, is quite insignificant. It's possible that when people hear about a coming magnetic storm and feel unwell, they experience a placebo effect. But there's also good news. All these charged solar particles interact with atoms and molecules in Earth's atmosphere. This interaction leads to beautiful northern lights. It's good to spend some time away from your gadgets and look up at the sky sometimes. One of the biggest storms occurred on March 13, 1989. On March 10, the Sun ejected a gigantic volume of coronal plasma. 
The amount of that material was the size of 36 Earths. The solar cloud was flying to us at a million miles per hour. And a couple of days later, it crashed into our planet's magnetic field. The collision caused a geomagnetic superstorm. People watched some of the brightest and most beautiful auroras in history. The light show covered most of the planet, but after a beautiful performance, problems followed. The solar storm was so powerful that it went through the atmosphere and reached Earth's surface. First, it disrupted the operation of satellites and then damaged electrical networks. For example, it destroyed a transformer at a nuclear power plant in New Jersey. Energy companies in Canada went down because of systems overloading. As a result, about 6 million people in northeastern Canada lost electricity for 9 hours. This was the largest power outage caused by a geomagnetic storm. Yeah, there were more powerful storms in the mid-19th and early 20th centuries, but the planet wasn't covered by so many power grids at that time. More powerful storms may occur in 2025. The question is, will we be ready for them? Careful study of solar activity can help us prepare. If we know in advance about an upcoming storm, then scientists can switch off some systems and turn them on afterward, theoretically. If the activity of the sun increases every year, then we'll have to come up with new innovative ways to protect ourselves. Who knows? Maybe scientists will cover all our electrical appliances and stations with a layer of special protective material. Anyway, we must do everything possible not to harm Earth's magnetic field. Because if this shield disappears, the surface of our planet will resemble that of Mars. But what causes these solar storms, and why do they affect us so much? Okay, imagine a guy with a nice hairstyle who goes to bed. In the morning, his head is a complete mess. The magnetic fields of the sun are similar to this tousled hair. When the sun rotates, these fields burst, get tangled, stretch, and tear. At those moments, they release huge amounts of energy into space. This is not a problem for the sun, as the fields are restored during the process called magnetic reconnection. Such emissions can cause trouble for the planets in our system. When magnetic reconnection happens, several phenomena can follow. One of them you've already heard about. It's a coronal mass ejection. But there's another terrible thing that the sun does, and it's called solar flare. Imagine a bright burst of solar radiation containing electromagnetic waves, X-rays, radiation, and visible and ultraviolet light. During flares, the sun releases an enormous amount of this destructive energy, and it spreads through space at the speed of light. It takes 8 minutes for this explosive wave to reach our planet. Fortunately, we don't get much damage from these flares because Earth's magnetic field and atmosphere protect us. Strong flares can disrupt radio waves in the upper atmosphere and affect the operation of satellites, but it's nothing critical. Another solar phenomenon is called a radiation storm. These are accelerated electrons and protons that move at a speed slightly less than the speed of light. Thanks to Earth's magnetic field, radiation storms don't harm our planet too much. But they pose a danger to astronauts and satellites. These particles can penetrate human tissues and lead to serious health problems in the way radiation does. But only if you're in space or flying a plane in the upper atmosphere. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.